Holes by Lewis Sacker. Chapter 7. Read for you by Mrs. Shoemaker. Chapter 7. The shovel felt heavy in Stanley's soft, fleshy hands. He tried to jam it into the earth, but the blade banged against the ground and bounced off without making a dent. The vibrations ran up the shaft of the shovel and into Stanley's wrists, making his bones rattle. It was still dark. The only light came from the moon and the stars, more stars than Stanley had ever seen before. It seemed he had only just gotten to sleep when Mr. Pandansky came in and woke everyone up. Using all his might, he brought the shovel back down into the dry lake bed. The force stung his hands, but made no impression on the earth. He wondered if he had a defective shovel. He glanced at Zero, about fifteen feet away, who scooped out a shovel full of dirt and dumped it on a pile that was almost already almost a foot tall. For breakfast they had been served some kind of lukewarm cereal. The best part was the orange juice. They each got a pint carton. The cereal actually didn't taste too bad, but it had smelled just like his cot. Then they filled their canteens, got their shovels, and were marched out across the lake. Each group was assigned a different area. The shovels were kept in a shed near the showers. They all had all looked the same to Stanley, although X-Ray had his own special shovel, which no one else was allowed to use. X-Ray claimed it was shorter than the others, but if it was, it was only by a fraction of an inch. The shovels are five feet long from the tip of the steel blade to the end of the wooden shaft. Henry's hole would have to be as deep as a shovel, and he'd have to be able to lay the shovel flat across the bottom in any direction. That was why X-Ray wanted the shortest shovel. The lake was so full of holes and mounds that it reminded Stanley of pictures he'd seen of the moon. If you find any inter anything interesting or unusual, Mr. Pandansky had told him, you should report it to either me or Mr. Sir when we come around with the water truck. If the warden likes what you found, you'll get the rest of the day off. What are we supposed to be looking for? Stanley asked him. You're not looking for anything. You're digging holes to build character. It's just if you find anything, the warden would like to know about it. He glanced helplessly at his shovel. It wasn't defective. He was defective. He noticed a thin crack in the ground. He placed the point of his shovel on the top of it, then jumped on the back of the blade with both feet. The shovel sank a few inches into the packed earth. He smiled. For once in his life, it paid to be overweight. He leaned on the shaft and pried up his first shovel full of dirt, then dumped it off to the side. Only ten million more to go, he thought, then placed the shovel back in the crack and jumped on it again. He unearthed several shovelfuls of dirt in this manner before it occurred to him that he was dumping his dirt within the perimeter of his hole. He laid his shovel flat on the ground and marked where the edges of his hole would be. Five feet was awfully wide. He moved the dirt he'd already dug up, out past his mark. He took a drink from his canteen. Five feet would be awful deep, too. The digging got easier after a while. The ground was hardest at the surface, where the sun had baked a crust about eight inches deep. Beneath that, the earth was looser. But by the time Stanley broke past the crust, a blister had formed in the middle of his right thumb, and it hurt to hold his shovel. Stanley's great-great-grandfather was named Elia Yelnats. He was born in Latvia. When he was fifteen years old, he fell in love with Myra Menke. He didn't know he was Stanley's great-great-grandfather. Myra Minky was 14. She would turn 14 in two months, at which time her father had decided she would be married. Elia went to her father to ask for her hand, but so did Igor Barkov, a pig farmer. Igor was 57 years old. He had a red nose and fat puffy cheeks. I will trade you my fattest pig for your daughter, Igor offered. And what have you got? Myra's father asked Elia. A heart full of love, said Elia. I'd rather have a fat pig, said Myra's father. Desperate, Elia went to see Madame Zeroni, an old Egyptian woman who lived on the edge of town. He had become friends with her, though she was quite a bit older than him. She was even older than Igor Barkov. The other boys of his village liked to mud wrestle. Elia preferred visiting Madame Zeroni and listening to her many stories. Madame Zeroni had dark skin and was a very wide mouth. 
When she looked at you, her eyes seemed to expand, and you felt like she was looking right through you. Elia, what's wrong? she asked, before he even told her he was upset. She was sitting in a homemade wheelchair. She had no left foot. Her leg stopped at her ankle. I am in love with Myra Menke, Eli confessed. But Igor Barkov has offered to trade his fattest pig for her. I can't compete with that. Good, said Madame Zaroni. You are too young to get married. You've got a whole life ahead of you. But I love Myra. Myra's head is as empty as a flower pot. But she is beautiful. So is a flower pot. Can she push a plow? Can she milk a goat? No, she is too delicate. Can, he, can she have an intelligent conversation? No, she is silly and foolish. Will she take care of you when you're sick? No, she is spoiled and will only wait, want you to take care of her. So she is beautiful. So what? Putui. Madame Zeroni spat on the dirt. She told Elia that he should go to America. Like my son, that is where your future lies, not with Myra Menke. But Elia would hear none of that. He was fifteen, and all he could see was Myra's shallow beauty. Madame Zeroni hated to see Elia so forlorn. Against her better judgment, she agreed to help him. It just so happens my sow gave birth to a litter of piglets yesterday, she said. There is one little runt whom she won't suckle. You may have him. He will die anyway. Madame Zeroni led Elia around the back of her house where she kept her pigs. Elia took the tiny piglet, but he didn't see what good it would do him. It wasn't much bigger than a rat. He'll grow, Madame Zeroni assured him. Do you see that mountain on the edge of the forest? Yes, said Elia. On the top of that mountain there is a stream where the water runs uphill. You must carry the piglet every day to the top of the mountain and let him drink from the stream. As it drinks, you are to sing to him. She taught Elia a special song to sing to the pig. On the day of Myra's fifteenth birthday, you should carry the pig up the mountain for the last time. Then take it directly to Myra's father. It will be fatter than any of Igor's pigs. If it is that big and fat, asked El Elia, how will I be able to carry it up the mountain? The piglet is too heavy, is not too heavy for you now, is it? asked Madame Zeroni. Of course not, said Elia. Do you think it will be too heavy for you tomorrow? No. Every day you will carry the pig up the mountain. It will get a little bigger, but you will get a little stronger. Then after you give the pig to Myra's father, I want you to do one more thing for me. Anything, said Elia. I want you to carry me up the mountain. I want to drink from the stream, and I want you to sing the song to me. Elia promised he would. Madame Zeroni warned that if he failed to do this, he and his descendants would be doomed for all of eternity. And at that time, Elia thought nothing of the curse. He was just a 15-year-old kid, and eternity didn't seem much longer than a week from Tuesday. Besides, he liked Madame Zeroni and would be glad to carry her up the mountain. He would have done it right then and there, but he wasn't strong enough yet. Stanley was still digging. His hole was about three feet deep, but only in the center. It sloped outward to the edge. The sun had only just come up over the horizon, but he already could feel its hot rays against his face. As he reached down to pick up his canteen, he felt a sudden rush of dizziness and put his hands on his knees to steady himself. For a moment he was afraid he would throw up, but the moment passed. He drank the last drop of water from his canteen. He had blisters on every one of his fingers and one in the center of each palm. 
Everyone else's hole was a lot deeper than his. He couldn't actually see their holes, but he could tell by the size of the dirt piles. He saw a cloud of dust moving across the wasteland, and noticed that the other boys had stopped digging and were watching it too. The dirt cloud moved closer, and he could see that it trailed behind a red pickup truck. The truck stopped near where they were digging, and the boys lined up behind it. X-ray in front, Zero at the rear. Stanley got in line behind Zero. Mr. Sir filled each of their canteens from a tank of water in the bed of the truck. As he took Stanley's canteen from him, he said, This isn't the Girl Scouts, is it? Stanley raised and lowered one shoulder. Mr. Sir followed Stanley back to his hole to see how he was doing. You better get with it, he said, or else you're going to be digging in the hottest part of the day. He popped some sunflower seeds in his mouth, deftly removed the shells with his teeth, and spat them into Stanley's hole. Every day, Elia carried the little piglet up the mountain and sang to it as it drank from the stream. As the pig grew fatter, Elia grew stronger. On the day of Myra's fifteenth birthday, Elia's pig weighed over fifty stones. Madame Zeroni had told him to carry the pig up the mountain on that day as well, but Elia didn't want to present himself to Myra smelling like a pig. Instead, he took a bath. It was a second bath in less than a week. Then he led the pig to Myra's. Igor Barkov was there with his pig as well. These are the two or two of the finest pigs I've ever seen, Myra's father declared. He was also impressed with Elia, who seemed to have grown bigger and stronger in the last two months. I used to think you were a good for nothing book reader, he said, but now I see you could be an excellent mud wrestler. May I marry your daughter? Elia boldly asked. First I must weigh the pigs. And alas, poor Elia should have carried his pig up the mountain one last time. The two pigs weighed exactly the same. Stanley's blisters had ripped open and new blisters formed. He kept changing his grip on the shovel to try to avoid the pain. Finally he removed his cap and held it between the shaft of his shovel and his raw hands. This helped, but digging was harder because the cap would slip and slide. The sun beat down on his unprotected head and neck. Though he tried to convince himself otherwise, he had been aware for a while that the, his piles of dirt were too close to his hole. The piles were outside his five-foot circle, but he could see he was going to run out of room. Still, he pretended otherwise and kept adding more dirt to the piles. Piles that he would eventually have to move. The problem was that when the dirt was in the ground, it was compacted. It expanded when it was excavated. The piles were a lot bigger than his hole was deep. It was either now or later. Reluctantly, he climbed out of his hole and once again dug his shovel into his previously dug dirt. Myra's father got down on his hands and knees and look, looked closely and examined each pig tail to snout. The, those are Two of the finest pigs I've ever seen, he said at last. How am I to decide? I have only one daughter. Why not let Myra decide? Suggests Elia. Well, that's pre preposterous, exclaimed Igor, expelling saliva as he spoke. Myra is an empty-headed girl, said her father. How could she possibly decide when I, her father, can't? She knows how she feels in her heart said Elia. Myra's father rubbed his chin. Then he laughed and said, Why not? He slapped Elia on the back. It doesn't matter to me. A pig's a pig. He summoned his daughter. Elia blushed when Myra entered the room. Good afternoon, Myra, he said. And she looked at him. You're Elia, right? She asked. Myra, said her father. Elia and Igor have each offered me a pig for your hand in marriage. It doesn't matter to me. A pig is a pig. So I will let you make the choice. Whom do you wish to marry? Myra looked confused. You want me to decide? That's right, my blossom, said her father. Gee, I don't know, 